Hi, my name is Martin Smith. I'm the Chef's Vineyards, and uh, I started a stockbroker account about eight months ago, seven, eight months ago, and then I decided to do one through the vineyard, start a stock brokerage account for an LLC. And today I'm looking to go over uh, methods in which I use to run stock, run my stocks. Uh, the, the approach that I'm looking at has a lot to do with uh, my dad, the last company, my or last big company my dad worked for, and that was uh, Winn-Dixie. And I can pretty much talk about them because they're out of business, and it was over 20 years ago, over 30 years ago, <laughs> long time ago. And uh, when you're dealing with stocks, you're buying a company. So uh, first thing you need to look at is management. How much money is the management uh, making? Uh, what's their salaries compared to what the company is making? Uh, how much stocks is in the com uh, is owned in house? As in, how much stocks are being paid out to the people that work there? Uh, the CEOs, how much stocks do they own? The the people that started up, people that are running it, how much? You know, what is their interest in uh, keeping the stocks? actually making money and being profitable. What happens a lot uh, is you get CEOs that are only interested in their own money and I'm going to go back to Winn-Dixie here because this is one of the things that I heard about constantly when I was growing up. So the uh, CEOs they're pretty much they're making large salaries to start off with and then they took the bread companies and the dairies, they funneled all the profits to the grocery stores into those entities and they were their own company. So, so, so the dairy had its own company name, money was being funneled into that and at the end of the year what they did is they took all that money and they turned it over into bonuses for all the CEOs uh, for the board of directory or basically the people that were in charge, the group who was in charge. And what they did with that money is they uh, purchased Winn-Dixie stocks with it. So they built up the stocks. And my dad was taken down to Florida and he, he, bra he bragged or made fun of all the other managers that were uh, taking up the CEOs on, you know, the free prostitutes that they provided. But they were providing those uh, prostitutes for uh, blackmail to keep all the lower management in place. They, they made fairly good money. And uh, my dad sold out because he wanted to uh, build a plant. He, he wanted to do a $7 million expansion. And when it comes to a dairy, uh, a lot of grocery stores or companies, they want to extract lots of money out. They want to put money into it, pull money out for their own bonus pay, but yet they don't want to uh, put $300,000 into a milk separator or any new equipment. I worked there two summers and I heard lots of stories from uh, some of the supervisors also and the assistant manager. So. I got to hear all this stuff about you know how how bad the uh, CEOs of companies were, and then I started looking on the stock market, and it is extremely bad. Uh, let's see here. One of the one of the companies that I was looking at because you if you get onto uh, Yahoo Finance, you can look up companies, and then you can go through and you can look through stats and you, you pretty much have to learn the stats as you go and you have to find out what's important to you on this stuff and then uh, as, as you watch other channels it takes a couple months to get uh, a really good grasp of what's going on uh, one of the companies I was looking at was Vale it's it's probably one of the best mining companies in the world from what I've been looking at however 
they're in a country that is nearly communist, that would be Brazil, and uh, nearly every single company in Brazil is corrupt. I mean, just absolutely, hands down, corrupt. So you have a company making huge cash, cash sums of money, and when you look at their finances, all that money just seems to have disappeared. So it has a book value of around $40 a share. It's selling for around $12 a share, and nobody's buying it. I mean, it, this if you look at the paperwork on it, this stock is an absolute steal. But the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. If you look at how many uh, shares of stock are owned in-house, it's less than 1%. Tesla's main uh, link that's not there is its P.E. ratio. This is... This is one of the first things you need to look at in a stock is a P.E. ratio. It was over 200 when I started buying it. A good P.E. ratio, under 10. Uh, but Tesla had over 17% of in-house stocks, or stocks owned in-house, as in owned by management. So management has a incentive to keep the stocks worthwhile and, and, you know, being worth something. If we look at Rivian, uh, the originator of Rivian divided the stocks. They have two types of stocks on that one. And the guy that's running it, he's made sure that he was going to be in power. And from what I've seen, he's pretty much diluted the stocks to make his perfect truck. He's not... I, I don't see him making... As many trucks as he can, he's not making them under the guise of how good is good enough. Uh, Elon Musk is doing a little bit different than that. But at any rate, uh, one of the one of the first things that a lot of people look at is a PE ratio. When I started looking at the stock stocks, I started looking at the companies, and the first thing I start going over is I get up on Google and I Google. Uh, actually, I start with Yahoo. I go into, uh, I believe it's finance or the section beside it that gives the uh, names of the CEOs and how much they make. Most of the time it's NA as to how much they make. And then I go up on Google and I start looking up all the names of these CEOs and I find out what companies they did and what kind of write-ups they have about them. And I look up as much information as I can about the people that run the company. And you can get all this hype about what the company's doing and it's it's doing all green or it's making uh, yeah the first thing I was looking at was windmills. My grandmother uh, made her fortune in the stock market on utility companies so she just invested uh, her life savings as she went on into the utility companies and that that was one of the things that she just really liked doing was uh, having those utility stocks. As I progressed, uh, being totally afraid of the stock market, thinking that you know it's all nothing more than scams, which 95% of it really is nothing more than scams, uh, I started getting into it. So the way I'm going now is what a lot of people keep forgetting when they look at that big huge uh, P.E. ratio, the aspect of stocks that most people look at first, uh, like I say when it started out it was over $200 when I put $20,000 in. The I went to a bank, uh, I transferred $20,000 over to my brokerage and I told them uh, I wanted about 10 shares because it when I started it was at 1200 You never buy at the top. You always want to wait for it to be at the bottom. So worst time to buy. So I waited for uh, Elon Musk to sell off a bunch of shares and I waited a little bit longer. So around uh, 940 
I told them to buy 10 shares and I was going to wait to see if it went down to 850 to buy some more. <clears throat> but, you know, I wanted 10 shares. I wanted to have something in it. And instead of that, the broker went ahead and it dropped down to 934. He knew that I wanted 940. He said, oh, what a bargain. He spent the entire 20000 all in one shot and bought me 21 shares. And he was so proud of himself. And I was shaking my head going, no, I'm not doing this again. So the next next broker, I decided to go through an LLC instead. And that, that was a absolute nightmare. It was... It took me about four months to get an account through an LLC. It took about less than two hours to get get it through the bank broker. And then after I was done with all that and played around, through through the LLC I started off, uh, I think I, I wanted just one or two in there. Just I already started the thing. By golly, I was going to get some. It dropped down to uh, 880, so I bought one at 880. Uh, one at 860, then uh, 700, and then I started, you know, paying attention to how the stocks went up and down and how the limit orders worked. So I, I would watch these up and down stocks, and I'd say, well, it might hit this peak here and or trough here, and that would be the bottom. So I'd be buying the lows, and I got fairly good at that, and eventually I got down to, uh, I did get three of them at $624 a share, and I actually bought the bottom. That doesn't happen very much. So I've got uh, 34 shares total now for the company, uh, 21 for personal, and then I, uh, from there, I decided to get a personal account that I could do on the computer. So I got three different types of accounts. One is through a bank broker. One uh, is a free account that you do over line. Uh, I did it through the phone system, through Fidelity, and it's it's been a fantastic system. Uh, I kept it with 4G, kept it off the main internet for security reasons. And I like that system a lot. I, I really do. It, it doesn't give me the day trading features that Fidelity has through the computers and how those day trading features work I don't know because I've just left it off. I, I wanted the higher security of the 4G. It was a little bit more important to me seeing is that company what money is something that I really it's money that I want to pass on to the next generations of my family. So um, my personal account uh, I went back to uh, Charles, Charles Schwab, uh, they're going to pick up the TD Ameritrade platform, the Thinkorswim platform, which is, from what I've seen, is the best out for day trading. So in about six months, I'd like to do some day trading on that, but I also want to test the waters on Charles Schwab, see how things go with transfers. Uh, they also do banking. I'm not really too sure how sound they are as a company. They just bought out TD, TD Ameritrade. Uh, they do broker, brokerages on the sides too. So I want to see how they go through the crash, make sure that they're going to be a, a valid company before I really put a lot of money into it. And also, uh, most of the stocks that I want to buy, like Intel, Vail, uh, Solo and Arkimoto are two companies that I, I'm really paying attention to. Uh, Arkimoto, the stock ticker is, uh, what was it, F F U V, and Solo is S-O-L-O, -O, for those who want to do that one or look into those two. Uh, I think those are better to buy after the crash, one that when the crash starts, just starts to go back up, I think that would be a better time to buy those. But for the most part, uh, I think I'm pretty much through buying Tesla. And I may sell off a batch if it spikes, if Elon Musk puts, puts them through a pinch or a, they call it a short squeeze in the stocks. Uh, so after the split, 
it short squeezes, so it splits three ways, maybe. Uh, goes up to close to 1200 I'm going to sell as much as I can sell, wait three months for it to crash down again, and rebuy. That's my plans anyway. Towards the end of the crash, what I'm looking to do, uh, Intel, I can see that company doing a 2x even if we don't go to war with China. I think we'll be in, in war with China next uh, September, October. And so that's what, about 14, a little over a year from now, a year and a half. Here, bought at least one, one share of Otter Tail for both my uh, over-the-line accounts, uh, just for luck. Uh, Otter Tail is one of the electric companies. My grandmother was into electric companies, so I figured I should have at least one share of electric company stock just for luck. And the other one uh, electric company that I thought would be a good one to be would be Clearway Energy. And again, what happens is right before the stocks crash, everyone piles into these green companies. I mean, it, it was high from the start. And when it crashed, both Clearway and Otter Tail went sky high. So they're, they're not good companies to buy right now. Uh, maybe after the crash, maybe after the crash starts going up. Uh, would be a better time to be buying some. I'm going to keep my eye on them. Uh, they're both, from the research I've done, they're both really green companies. They're getting into a lot of solar. They're getting into a lot of wind. And just for that reason, uh, for power, as far as power company, electric companies go, uh, those were my two favorites. And that genre of a company, just because that's the kind of utility company my my grandmother made her money in it. It's sort of, it's sort of a luck thing. Uh, go, you know, again, uh, st doing all my research through Yahoo Finance. I, I, I don't really see myself as making enough money in finance to uh, pay for any uh, finance charts or stock gurus or anything like that. So. Uh, Yahoo has a free basis. Uh, the other free basis, if you're wanting to study stocks, would be uh, every, everything money. Uh, that's a good web, uh, that's a YouTube channel. Uh, the Yahoo Finance is a program that you load down into your computer off the internet, and it's uh, like yahoofinance.com, and you just download it and you just start it up, study it, do some research on it, go through every column you can find on it, look for subpages, and uh, uh, just go back and forth and you'll learn it slowly and, and you'll learn the things that are important to you. Uh, let's see here how I am investing. I, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, yeah, think, things uh, uh, I am betting against the stock market right now, so after Tesla, I might buy a few pieces of Veil because I don't really see it going up much anymore. It may come down some more, but then that sets it up for a Charlie Munger takeover in which he goes in and buys the whole company, and instead of, like, say, the company, if they were to take that company crash it out and sell it, they'd probably get about $20 a share. The stock, the value per stock is $40, uh, approximately $40. I think they could get about $20 per share if they just broke the company up and sold it in pieces. And they'd make about $7 per share just breaking the company up. And if the company decides, hey, we don't want to get broken up, let's start making this work and let's start making this profitable, if uh, if a company like Charlie Mongers gets gets a hold of a company like Vale, it would go sky high even even in a country like Brazil, unless Brazil decides they're going to take over the company again and say, "Hey, we're just going to make this a a state run company." Uh, let's see here. Yep, that pretty much covers it, and I'll see you on another video.